Hey everybody, this is Seed Raman and we are back with yet another video where we discuss, explain and talk about Web3 stuff. In this video, we are going to discuss the different types of decentralization. That's right, there are a couple of them. Now, in our previous video, we talked about the idea of decentralization and explained how it allocates control and responsibility of a system across multiple entities. So now, the difference in the type of decentralization actually comes from the different entities to which we allocate the control to. Let me break it down. You see, when we analyze a system or an application, we can see that it is not just made up of people who make the decision but it also involves other things like the underlying hardware or architecture that supports the system, the code or the logic that governs its operations, and of course, the people who control all these things. So when we talk about a decentralized system, we can't simply limit the scope of decentralization to the decision-making aspect. Instead, we should apply decentralization to all the other layers of your system, including its architecture and logic. To put this into perspective, imagine that a company created an application and they decide to host it using one of their servers. Here, we can say that the application is both politically and architecturally centralized, meaning that it is single-handedly controlled by the company and the application is supported by a single or centralized architectural component. In order for the application to be politically and architecturally decentralized, it should be controlled by a group of individuals or organizations and it should be hosted across multiple servers or machines. Now, talking about the application logic, if the logical components that governs the operations of the application act like a single unified entity, we can say that it is logically centralized. In order to avoid this, the logical components of the system should be defined in such a way that even if the system gets split into different parts, each of those parts should be able to operate independently of each other. Now, given the new revelations, if we analyze the note-taking process in our regular classroom, we can say that the system is architecturally decentralized as the nodes are hosted in multiple notebooks, but it is politically and logically centralized as the teacher controls the overall process and if we were to split the class into multiple independent groups, they might not yield the same result. So, when we talk about decentralization of systems, we mean decentralization in terms of the overall control, the underlying architecture, and of course, the governing logic. Got it? Great. See you in the next one.